The outskirts of the Michigan State University campus provided ample room for a collision course. I think all of us are a little afraid, but everybody here felt uh, compelled to be here because this is wrong. This kind of ideology is not welcome here and that we are a diverse area and that we will push back. Supporters of an alt-right leader march in formation through the heart of those protesting against their very presence here. Their path was not the one of least resistance. They gave him a platform, uh, the organizers and, and everybody's out here just to, to resist against that. Punches led to scrums, which in turn led to arrests. One by one, demonstrators from both sides led away in cuffs, including Greg Conti, a Richard Spencer supporter and the director of operations for the National Policy Institute. Police say 24 of the 500 people here taken into custody for one reason or another. Of those charges, uh, some are uh, weapons offenses as well as hindering obstructing as well as someone throwing uh, something some type of chemical at the crowd. The demonstrators aiming their protests at multiple perceived enemies. Spencer is here because the MSU administration allows him to be here. Yeah. 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 Spencer is here because the state of Michigan pays all these cops to come out and protect the fascists. Police were seen escorting some white nationalists to the venue. In other places, we watched as protesters laid behind SWAT vehicles and had to be forcefully removed. As for Richard Spencer, the speech itself was held inside the horse pavilion here on campus. Now, most of the members of the media were denied access inside. However, the speech was streamed live on the website altright.com. Here is what the live stream looked like as Spencer spoke to roughly two dozen supporters about taking alt-right from a movement to something that are, in his words, real. As for the melee that was happening outside during his speech, he called the anti-fascists sick freaks. We are overwhelmingly against racism. We are not teaching that in our schools. And says if they tried to prevent this event, they failed. According to police sources, a few officers here received minor injuries. No word on how many of the 500 were hurt, however. Right around 6 p.m., the crowd dispersed and things were once again quiet here on campus. In East Lansing, Dave Spencer, no relation to Richard Spencer, Fox 2 News. Finding your place in the world is one of the most difficult things we'll ever do in our lives. But for Saladin, there was no question. From a pretty early age, I was writing little comic strips and, and making up stories. Growing up in Detroit, he, like millions of other children, found a place within the pages of comic books. I was born in the south end of Dearborn and grew up in the south end and uh, east Dearborn and went to Fortson High School. Comic books, uh, particularly Marvel comics, uh, really taught me to read. I didn't necessarily have the... Uh, the kind of best formal education around uh, in my early years. There were always books and there were always comics around. And uh, even when I found books intimidating, uh, comic books were always uh, accessible to me. Saladin has been writing comic books for years, including the book Abbott, which told the story of a young African-American journalist in Detroit during the 70s. But now he's taking on a daunting task and starting a new line for one of the most recognizable heroes on the market. Saladin says that finding his voice in comics has had a positive side effect, being a role model to the children he connects with. If anything, it's thrilling to kind of meet other kids from Detroit, other Arab American kids, uh, African American kids who um, are interested in trying to tell these stories themselves and, uh, and, and can see somebody from this place and who kind of has a background maybe similar to theirs um, who's, who's out there doing this. So that's, that's exciting to me, it's thrilling. Detroit born, Detroit proud. Scott Adams, Fox 2 News. Hey, I've been on the road since 5 a.m. I've been out there on 696. Uh, that's my route between uh, Greenfield and Orchard Lake. I've been out there today. It's roughly about an 18 mile round trip. But now that the roads are looking really well, my route's doing really well. There's a lot of traffic out there tonight on 696. I imagine everybody's on their way home. But it's part of our job, you know, if it snows here, no matter what day of the year it is, uh, we got to come in and, you know, do our job. It's something we signed up to do. It pays us well to do so. And my wife's very understanding and she likes the money, so <laughs> it's all good. Actually, I've had a few people today nod to me, wave, you know, I think they, uh, they appreciate that we're giving up our Christmas so that uh, they can drive safely out there on the roads and get to their family and enjoy their Christmas. you have any advice for people out on the roads tonight? Just slow down. 
you know, that's about it. It's going to start icing up here shortly, so just take it nice and slow and let us do our job and give us some room. That's Paul Bashi alone in his rental home in Washington Township. Whether he knows it or not, cameras inside his house record his every move. He is, in fact, looking through her phone, and then you will see Christina come through the door here, which is the front door of the, the residence. What happens next to Christina, the girlfriend of the assault suspect, is the reason investigators at the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office are watching this video. He comes back multiple times with multiple knives. With multiple knives. The attack, much too graphic at times to show. He's got the knife in his hand oh there. Ooh. He's striking her multiple times. For 40 minutes, the video shows Bocce punching, kicking, throwing lit candles at her repeatedly, and worse. Stabbing her multiple times. Leaving the room at times, washing the knives before coming back to attack. He's opening the drawer, grabbing another knife. Little, if any, words are exchanged. Just rage. She's just laying there. You can see she's, yeah, not, she's fighting. not fighting back, moving at all. No. She survives, but barely, in a coma for days. Bashi arrested after neighbors find Christina on the porch and call police, charging him with assault with intent to murder. This video, as awful as it is, thank God we have it. Evidence that is hard to argue, at least you would think. During his arraignment, an unlikely witness takes the stand for his defense, Christina. Told the judge, wanted to dismiss the charges, um, wanted the defendant out of jail, and, and told the judge that, that it was her fault that this happened. After being beaten and stabbed inches from death, she wants the case thrown out. Prosecutor Eric Smith says it happens in more than half of the domestic violence cases that end up on his desk. Our office handles about 2,500 cases of domestic violence a year. And of those cases, nearly 60% of the victims either recant their story in the court or don't show up to the court at all. He says whatever the reasons given, the law allows his office to move forward with charges. The defendant puts pressure on the victim to dismiss the charges. Well, we are the only ones that can dismiss the charges, so we don't do it. And he's willing to talk about this case because of how clearly it illustrates what can happen in these situations. If you see someone going through this and you think someone's going through this, even if they say they're not, because th th they're afraid to come forward in any way, shape, or form, and it's a difficult thing to do, but you, you got to put yourself in there and help.